Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. Um, today we're going to be talking about what we are doing in the real estate market today. So, Kirby, I can't even keep up with how many properties you buy. I just I feel like it's like ten or something. But um, what are you doing uh right now as far as real estate? Or are you yeah? Are you focusing more on stocks right now, or what's uh what's going on? Uh, well, it's, it's funny. Yeah. Cause I'm glad you asked that. Um, right now I'm doing nothing in real estate, nothing. In real estate. I, I still got my eye on the market. I'm still looking at the MLS every day, but I've been holding serve. I've been even, and Alex, you can get into what you got going on, but even before that, uh, you started the venture you're on now. I had a plan at the beginning of the year that I was going to do X amount of deals. I'm 20% there. I'm on 20% to my goal for the year. And then I told myself I can force deals or I can wait. And I and then as I'm starting to see the, you know, the real estate market in Florida, that's a no-brainer. I'm not even touching that. But this across the country, as I'm seeing the real estate market uh evolve, I haven't seen nothing that's to my liking or nothing that looks like it's going to be in my favor. Uh, at the present time. And then I'm looking at how the interest rates are going. I'm looking at how the escrow is going. I'm looking at how the insurance rates are going in Florida, Texas, California. Uh, probably start seeing stuff in Hawaii and Nevada uh, going up a lot. But understand the insurance crisis is going to be nationwide. It's, I mean, it's going to hurt more in Florida, Texas, California. But it's going to be nationwide because most of these insurance insurers are nationwide. If they spend more money in one state, they need the states where they're not spending enough money to pay higher premium to cover the shortfall that they have in the states that they're paying more in. So what I'm doing is I'm just preaching my book. Like we talked about earlier in the year about escrow payments. I know it's coming time where there's going to be a lot of people hurting. Matter of fact, I'm on the phone with people almost every day that are hurting. And I'm waiting to take advantage of those, those times. And we've talked on here a lot that I'm not real big into the single family properties. I'm not real big on taking advantage of, you know, owner ops, you know, people who, you know, trying to search for the American dream and have a house that they live in, you know, and then they're in bad situations. I'm not a big fan of going after those kind of people, but other investors, I'm all for taking advantage of them. I'm all for getting them, getting the blood in the streets and taking advantage of it. Now, most of the people that's been reaching out to me recently has been owner ops looking for, you know, ways out. And of course, they still want to get out of the bad situation they're in, but they still want a big profit from getting out of the situation they're in, but they can't do the repairs and things of that nature. I'm just not in that game. So I've just been sitting here stacking funds um, and I'm going to keep stacking funds. I'm, of course, still in the stock market also, but I'm not in a rush to do nothing right now. What I'm, As I'm seeing the real estate market, how it's maneuvering, I think it's going to give me a lot of opportunity to take advantage of bad situations, especially those people who was buying uh, properties in 2020, 2021, 2022, at those exorbitant prices and they realize that they can't get the rent up to where they need them to be the cash flow. And, and then you remember the deal that I had uh, up, up north where the guy, I think he paid, let's say 700, like a year and a half ago, but then he wanted to sell it for 1.5 million now. And the property wasn't even cash flowing went in cash flow for him at seven, but wanted to sell it for 1.5 or 1.3. And then he cut the price to a million. But I told the I told the real estate agent, I said, this property is only worth seven max. And of course, the real estate agent gets upset. And he said, oh, we're going to have a buyer by tomorrow. And still to this day, and it's been almost 120 days since we had that conversation, that property is still in the market. And of course, it's commercial, a commercial debt. So... I don't know what his terms is and things like that. So when that interest rate resets, then he's going to be he's going to be in a very bad situation. 
but those are the investors that I'm looking to take advantage of. You know, they they looked at, and I know I'm going a little long here, but they, you know, they looked at a couple YouTube shorts. You know, they probably did the Reader's Digest version of Pace Morbly, uh, but they didn't get the they didn't get the nuances of how this game really works. Those are the people I'm looking to take advantage of. They didn't know the numbers. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And I'm ready to take them to the woodshed. And that's what my plan is. And I'll sit here and wait for them. Because just like the owner ox that suffered, these uh, so-called real estate investors that thought that they was going to have a quick flip, they in, they in a hurting place also. So I'm just sitting there waiting for them to come to me. So, yeah. Alex, what you got going on? I know you, you're doing yours a little different than me. Uh, I mean, right now, so I'm in the middle of, I'm not even in the middle, I'm towards the end. I'm under contract with uh, Duplex, and we're good to close in four days. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is pretty much set up for it. I mean, I've already done my due diligence and everything and have plans to get started on work almost immediately after we close and get one of the units that's currently vacant rented out this would be my first multifamily. uh so this is a different experience as well um there's a lot more work that i've had to go into it there's a, the experience coming in a factor that um there is a vacant unit and i'm learning you know what needs to be done in order to get that unit occupied i'm learning the differences of multifamily and single family tenants are different um the uh structure is different i mean they're it's appraised different it's it's an interesting process but um my goal for the year was to get uh just another property before it, the year closed out and so it looks like i'll reach that goal um and then after that um and after that i i i do want to get uh situated as far as funds um, because it seems like in real estate, once you, well, at least when you're beginning, once you buy a property, you're like investing everything into it. Um, mm -hmm. so then it's like that, like you're broke temporarily and then it's just a matter of getting the funds back, but there's some strategies I'd like to do to, um, diversify, um, what did you call it? classes asset classes um as far as having real estate and then having the necessary funds on standby for future projects for uh stock investments for emergency uh issues and and so forth no um, yeah and it, it feels like that. It feels like every time, especially starting out, it feels like that. And the thing yeah. is, is, and as you see now, I mean, you went from zero rental property. This will be your third property, fourth property. I can't keep up with you. Um, but you start noticing that the, the money comes back faster. The more property you have, the money comes back faster. And the striving to go broke, that's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. I mean, when I deploy... When I deploy this capital, I'm deploy. I'm planning on deploying capital till I. It makes me hungry again to go get more capital. That's what it is. I mean, we're not out here, you know, going and raising outside funds and things like that. You know, like all the YouTube gurus say, you know, this is money that we create. We ain't making money off YouTube. This is money that we grind and get ourselves to make it happen. You know, we make sacrifices to get the money to do it, but. The thing that you, I mean, y'all know you already see it. The money comes back faster and then it's ready to deploy. It's come back faster, ready to deploy. And then I think the last deal I did was in March. I think it was in March. I can't remember. But yeah, but then I just see the money come back. I mean, you you know, I had that uh, last month, I had a headache of of uh, a domino effect of issues, about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 of, you know, issues, AC units going out, you know, here in hot Florida, AC units going out like it's cool, but that's that's stuff that happens, but you all you see the money come, you see the money come, and then you're looking to deploy. And I mean, being I mean, being diversified in assets is good. Uh, like me, I'm like I said, I've been focused more on the stock market because I mean, of course, you see me posting all the time about stocks and stuff like that. 
But I've been more, more focused on that. And it's not about, oh, I'm totally blind to what's going on in real estate. You look at the real estate in MLS every day. Oh, every know. day, <laughs> all day. And I'm just looking for, I'm just looking forward to seeing where the opportunities are going to arise. I mean, I got, you know, I add 20 to 30 to my favorites list every day. And I'm just keeping track of what they're doing, keeping track of what they're doing. And then once once I get that opportunity that I'm looking for, if I'm getting a price that makes sense to me, if I'm buying properties that's cash flow on day one, then I'm on it. Right now, it's you're hard pressed. And like I said, if you look in the state of Florida, if you can find a property that cash flow day one when you buy it, sign me up. Because trust me, I'm looking every day and there's not one out there. But and then so that's just where I'm at right now in the market. I'm not saying, oh, the market is all bad. Is there opportunities out there? Alex just found an opportunity. Alex paid below list price. Alex got seller concessions. So there is opportunity out there. Um, and not saying that I couldn't find one if I was just digging deep and sitting here hammering real estate agents over the head like Alex is doing right now. I could find a deal. But I'm waiting to take advantage of these investors that went crazy and during the COVID times and they bought wrong and now they feel in the wrath of their wrong their wrong dealings. And I'm planning on taking advantage of that. And I think I'll I can pick up a lot more units during that time. But if one come across my desk, I will ha happily jump on it if I can find one that's right now that's cash for it. But that's where I'm at in the state of the real estate game. So that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, leave us a comment down below. If you guys are investing in real estate, let us know what you're doing. Share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.